Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's about Fanny Lungo back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. Like I said, my name is Fanny Lungu, and on this channel, we post reaction videos each and every day. So if there's something in particular that you guys want us to react to, let us know by dropping the link in the comment section below, and we'll do it for you. You can check out our second YouTube channel called Funny and Jesse 2.0. We post weekly content. You guys can hit the subscribe and enjoy. We've got a podcast called Diving In with Funny and Jesse. You can find us on iTunes, Spotify, Podbean, this channel, or our second YouTube channel for the visual. And we have a Patreon account. You guys can feel free to become members and we'll appreciate. A big shout out to everyone that has subscribed to our channel so far. Thank you for subscribing, liking, commenting. Everything just that you guys are doing is very much appreciated i hope you guys are doing all right and may you stay blessed a big shout out to the person that suggested this today we're going to be reacting to why did prophet muhammad marry multiple women was it because of lust interesting questions so without wasting time let's get into the video this question itself is an insult to both history and logic. The reason why someone would have this doubt or ask this question in the first place can only be because they don't know enough about his life. Let's look at his life together and see if we can find a clue about lust. He didn't marry anyone until the age of 25. We know biologically that this age, ages between 15 to 25 to 30s, are the ages that a man has the most sexual desire. And with the agreement of both his enemies and his friends, he was known as Al Amin, the trusted one. If your friends can trust you, that's one thing. I mean, it's still good, but if your enemies can trust you, that's a whole another level. Everyone was so sure that he would give no harm to their family members or any other women that they gave him this name. Even on the streets, he would walk fast, stand straight, look down to not see anyone in their revealing clothing. He would look down to his toes. I mean, can you believe that? This kind of ethics and morals from someone who lives in the 7th century. Even today, we're fighting with street harassments, rapes, immoralities. In UK, 66 of women between 14 to 21 report that they've been harassed at least once. One in six American women have experienced rape in their lifetime. Would any of these happen if men had tried to be like him? Anyways, let's get back to the question. So, he's clean from lust until the age of 25. Khatija, his first wife, who was 40 when her prophet was 25, proposed to him. He didn't even propose to someone, but a woman proposed to him. They married and he was married to her for 25 years until Khatija died. He still has only one wife so far. So until the age of 50, he was married to her, a woman 15 years older than him. And from the age of 50 to 53, he didn't marry anyone from the sorrowfulness of her death and he visited her grave from time to time. At the age of 53, he married a 55 year old woman and at the age of 54, he married another woman. And that's the first time he married with more than one woman. Now here's the question, how can someone who is Al Amin until the age of 50 54. Someone who protects himself from lust for 54 years can be lustful after the age of 54. It doesn't make any sense. And also, we should consider that in his 40s, he could have taken anyone he wanted. For example, one day people came to him with an offer. They said, come be our leader, we're okay with that. Choose the most beautiful and young women. We will give you them. Money, properties, whatever you want, take it, just give up from what you say and leave us our idols. And our Prophet ﷺ said, even if you give the sun on my right hand and the moon on my left hand, I will not give up. Now, here's my question and I want you to answer it sincerely. Can there be any way that he is doing this for women, for money, for leadership? Does it make any sense to say that he marries women out of his lust? Anyone who can simply use some logic would say that it doesn't make any sense. Also, with one or two exceptions, women he married were older than him. Let's not fool ourselves. If you would marry someone out of lust, they would be young. At least they wouldn't be old. Who would marry with older people out of lust? That 
wouldn't be out of lust. Like if you had seen someone like that, you would say there is another reason. And if you have just a little bit of conscience, it should be the same for you. Okay, if it's not out of lust, why then, right? Why did he marry more than one woman? All right, firstly, we should understand that our Prophet's first mission والسلام, is his prophethood. Doing his prophethood task by calling people to Islam, telling them about Islam in the best way possible, showing them the way to live, explaining them their purpose of life, this is his priority. And when we look at his marriages, we understand that they have so many benefits serving to that purpose, like conveying the message of Islam in the best way possible. And this is the way we should look at his life. We should consider that his priority was always his prophethood. That's the only reason why you could so easily reject the offer of idol worshippers. Look, here's a great explanation from the Rizal Inner Collection. As with his words, the actions, states, conduct, and deeds of God's Messenger upon them be blessings and peace are the sources of religion and the Sharia and provide authority for its injunctions. The companions transmitted the outward public things and his wives were the transmitters and narrators of the private matters of religion and injunctions of the Sharia that became clear from his private conduct in that personal sphere. They performed that function. Perhaps Half of the personal matters of religion and the injunctions concerning them come from them. That is to say, numerous wives of differing temperaments were required to perform this necessary duty. All of them were students of him. Some of them were daughters of the leaders of other tribes. And at that time, if there was a marriage between two tribes, those tribes would have a brotherhood kind of bond. So, when he married them, all of a tribe met Islam and most of their afterlives were saved. Every Muslim should learn how they should behave in a certain situation. This can even be something like how to treat your wife when she's jealous or how to treat your daughters. That's why wives with different character, different temperaments were needed because people still don't know how to live a family life. Even today, there are people who beat their wives or who prefer sons to daughter. That's because they don't know how much our Prophet والسلام, loved his daughters. Most people today stop loving their wives as soon as lust dies. That's why they don't know how our Prophet والسلام, treated his older wives. Anyway, so there are many good reasons behind his marriages. And to call him awful things before you even understand his life is nothing but ignorance. We all have things to learn from our Prophet regardless of our religion. Even if you deny his prophethood, if you search a little bit about him, you will find him as a good teacher. This is very interesting. The videos that we watch that I personally agree with and the videos that I don't agree with. I think if you watch the first few times when we would react to our Islamic videos, I've always stood by say I've always said that I really don't support the issue of marrying many wives. That's my choice. I guess people have different choices. If you want to do it, good for you that's you you've got your reasons why you do that but i also have my reasons as to why i disagree with such an act and i was just wondering according to what this guy said so instead of being a hypocrite and just agreeing with everything he's saying i would love to ask because i'm not knowledgeable when it comes to, th to this so does it mean that men lose uh that last factor about them when they turn 50 and in this video he's given examples of how the prophet was always marrying older women but i think it's also said somewhere i've seen this in the comments people going back and forth about it that muhammad also ended up marrying someone way young because this guy was saying if it was last then the prophet would have gone for younger women also when it comes to last i don't think i think old people are attractive which is the eyes of the beholder so maybe for him he was finding beauty in other women despite the women actually helping him with what he believed in 
he still ended up marrying other women so i'm trying to find out was he not dropping his gaze when he came across these women or were these marriages um um like organized by people please just shed more light on that i know the first woman proposed to him but what about the rest if you drop because what i understand if you're going to drop your gaze when it's uh you see other women whatever the case is don't you think that would prevent you from finding otherwise otherwise like i said everyone has a choice and everyone has their own opinion you may think marrying wives different wives is fine good for you i won't judge you you've got your reasons i think I'm just not for that idea and I've got my reasons as well so I respect you you respect me but feel free to answer my questions make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and I'll see you in my next reaction video